It seems like late 1987 and all of 1988 were the prime years to rip off A Nightmare on Elm Street. There are so many films within this small span that try to ride the coattails of the Kruger films. Now, I've already covered Bad Dreams and 976 Evil, but there's also Slumber Party Massacre 2, Prom Night 2, Don't Panic, and Slaughterhouse Rock. Now, it makes sense that there was a flood of these clones being released because Kruger was on top of the world during these years. Dream Warriors came out in 87, which was the highest grossing Elm Street film by a wide margin. And then, just a year later, Nightmare 4 The Dream Master surpassed the box office success of Part 3 big time. The franchise was trending up and money was rolling in. It seems like Freddy Krueger could do no wrong and fans were hungry for the burn Dream Demon. Speaking of which, the UK film Dream Demon from 1988 is yet another example of taking the Elm Street formula and trying to cash in on it. But did Dream Demon plagiarize a nightmare on Elm Street? Well, when we talk about these proclaimed Elm Street ripoffs, we must first dip our toes into the surface level similarities before we dive into the plot and really break down those differences. And of course, we'll end with a rating to determine if Dream Demon really is an Elm Street ripoff. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Our lead girl is having dreams. Terrible dreams. In these nightmares, people begin to die, and when she wakes up, the people she dreamt about are missing, presumably dead. Her nightmares are filled with surreal images, and there are moments in the film where she doesn't know if she's awake or dreaming. In these dreams, she sees a man who died by fire. There's also a little girl in a white dress who was hurt by the man who died by fire. Okay, yeah, I can see how Dream Demon could be considered an Elm Street clone, but clearly there is more to it that I'm not telling you. So let's break down that plot and see how Dream Demon differs. We open on our lead, Diana, as she gets on her wedding dress. After the opening credits, we cut to her and her soon-to-be husband at the church's altar about to get married. When asked to take him as her husband, instead of saying I do, she hesitates and claims that she can't go through with it. He is freaked out and he's mad that she did this to him in front of everyone, so he slaps her. Well, she slaps back. Well, yeah, that is one way to set the tone. Freaking awesome. Turns out that was just a dream. She's a few days away from her wedding and clearly she's a bit nervous about it. She moved into a new house, but her fiance doesn't stay with her just yet. She's marrying a famous man and she comes from a family of money. So as you can imagine, paparazzi are everywhere. The paparazzi pry into Diana's life and find out that she is a virgin and they begin to harass her. Luckily, Diana runs into Jenny. Jenny helps Diana with the paparazzi and they escape into Diana's new house. The two quickly become friends. Jenny is from America, although she was adopted. She believes she is from London and not just anywhere in London. She thinks that she lives in the very house that Diana lives in now. Well, Diana continues to have these awful dreams. One of these dreams, the paparazzi cameraman dies and it turns out that he's missing the very next day. The cameraman haunts her dreams and eventually Jenny gets trapped in the nightmare too anytime that Diana begins to dream. Jenny and Diana try to figure out what these dreams mean. Who is the burning man? Who is the child in white? What are these mazes? And why does the paparazzi continue haunting her even in her dreams? Dream Demon can be a bit all over the place and not all of the questions are resolved. It's a bit frustrating since Dream Demon is pretty freaking awesome most of the time. Cinematography is sharp, picture quality is stunning, performances are top notch, and some of the ideas are amazing. There are some praiseworthy special effects in gore too. One of my favorite things about this movie is how you never know if Diana is dreaming or not. It's something that early Nightmare on Elm Street films did really well, and Dream Demon excels at it. There are dreams within a dream, and things are rarely as they seem. The music is also great. It's airy at times, with deep synthetic undertones, and it reminds me of Hellraiser's soundtrack. Actually, a lot of this film feels like Hellraiser to me. 
Maybe it's the UK setting. Maybe it's just the time period. There's just some surreal, romanticized blood and violence, and I think Hellraiser and Dream Demon both share in that tone. Dream Demon isn't perfect, though. And even though the good definitely outweighs the bad, there are some serious issues here. Some major plot elements aren't resolved and the climax doesn't make a ton of sense. In fact, a lot of the movie doesn't make sense. I guess you could chalk it up to dream logic, but I think it's lazy writing. There are so many fun and creative ideas, but it's just missing a sensible and grounded backbone that connects it all together. Maybe the script went through one too many rewrites. Some elements just feel removed and barely remain in the final picture as shells of its former self. It's crazy to think that the original film elements were considered lost for decades. Luckily, the director discovered the negatives in the bowels of Technicolor and Arrow Films later rescanned the film for their Blu-ray release. And thank goodness the film was found. Film preservation is no joke. Dream Demon won't be for every Kruger fan. It's more serious in tone with more surreal elements. It's not a slasher film and it doesn't fall into the typical tropes. It's tonally very different from A Nightmare on Elm Street and it strives to do its own thing. Yes, some elements are copied, but how they are presented couldn't be more different. Dream Demon is still a good time though. Different isn't a bad thing and in this case, it's a good fresh take on a tired idea. So how much Elm Street DNA does Dream Demon have? I'd say it's about 30% Elm Street and 70% its own thing. If you squint really hard, yeah, you might see some of the parallels, but these are two completely different movies that are both worth your time. And that's all I have for tonight, so. Sweet dreams, everyone. Thanks so much for watching till the end of the video. I've been talking about dreams and nightmares a lot lately, so it got me thinking, what was the worst dream that you've ever had? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Thank you and have a good night.